You guys wanted me to watch this movie. A new release, Immaculate. The reasons were simple. Nuns, Italy, and even a little hidden Easter egg for the real Jalo fans. So I'm taking y'all up on this. Special thanks to Mudstyle for requesting that I do a review on Immaculate. I'm delivering. Okay, so the first half of this video is going to be spoiler free. Most of this video is going to be spoiler free. When we get into the spoiler section, I will warn you. However, if you prefer to go into your films completely blind, then you probably shouldn't watch this because I am going to be like telling you a little bit about what it's about. So I saw this in the theater and before we begin, I just wanted to talk about three horror trailers that I saw before the film started. First, we have Tarot. No. No. Next, we have Abigail. We kidnapped a vampire. A ballerina vampire. No. No. And then we also have A Quiet Place, day one. I will allow it. Anyway, let's get on to Immaculate. This film was directed by Michael Mohan and written by Andrew Lobel. Or is it Lobel? I don't know. And it is starring Sydney Sweeney, who I hear her name a lot. I guess she's in Euphoria, but I, I don't think I've seen anything that she's been in. And here is the synopsis for Immaculate as it appears on Letterboxd. Cecilia an American nun of devout faith embarks on a new journey in a remote convent in the picturesque Italian countryside. Cecilia's warm welcome quickly devolves into a nightmare as it becomes clear her new home harbors a sinister secret and unspeakable horrors. So Sydney Sweeney, or Sweeney Todd as my husband keeps calling her, is the star of this movie. Her performance is great. I don't think that would be debated by anybody. It's awesome. It's, uh, she does an excellent job, some really, really powerful scenes. But I would say her character is kind of weird. Her character is sort of like lacking in personality, you could say. Like, we don't, there's nothing going on. Like, who are you? We don't know anything about her. And she's, she's just there. I don't know. It's weird. According to the Synopsis, she's a devout nun, but nothing that we see from her like portrays that or exemplifies that. But that could be intentional because it does seem that this whole movie is pretty devoid of faith and spirituality at all. So as for the look of this film, maybe it's to be expected that with a big budget like this, it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna have a really nice set. And y'all have heard me talk about modern horror where it's a lot of minimalistic interiors. But this is not what we get in this film. Obviously this convent is historical and beautiful and we're in the Italian countryside, which is beautiful. So visually, there's just a lot of religious imagery and beautiful architecture. Like that is all just delicious. Oh, and the lighting, we get like tons of candlelight <laughs> and it's just very like, yellowy and shadowy and it's really really pretty the cinematography was also really beautiful and also okay so like with classic nun exploitation these nuns are wearing makeup right because it's the movies and we want our nuns to be hot but this i really do appreciate the raw and realistic appearance of Sydney. I'm sure they have some makeup on her, but she's got this very like makeup free look, which would be in line with an actual real life nun who's not wearing makeup. And we even get to see these like little imperfections that I feel like filmmakers would normally try to correct. You know, like she has bloodshot eyes a lot of the time and stuff. And I just really love it. The sound design in this movie was nice too. Again, with what you see with a lot of modern and big budget horror films, you have these moments of silence but the sounds that are there are very distinct like you you can hear the sound of her 
placing her bag down. You can hear the sound of the cigarette like burning, you know? And especially with a lot of these like dubbed over Euro films that I'm typically watching, like you're not you're not getting a lot of sound effects. So I really do like those heightened sound effects that we see in a lot of modern horror. And the music is very good. It's not too intense, but it's also not not too like theatrical, I guess. And of course, if you've seen this movie and you also like Jalo, then you probably know that there's a very special song. Like, I can't believe this happened. I haven't gone and like read about why this is in here or how this is in here or, or like what prompted this. But there is a song from a Jalo film it's just like planted right in the movie. And I had warning, okay? And I think if I hadn't, I might have like fallen out of my chair. My head would have exploded or something. But still, when that song came on, I was like, it fit. It really worked. I was not sure how like a 70s song would work in a modern movie, but it works. It's so cool. Also, speaking of hidden inspirations, there are some scenes like in hanging bed sheets outside that it just really reminds me of. Halloween, I can't help but think that maybe it was a little inspired by Michael Myers. Of course, that is if Michael Myers was the first movie where this was happening. So next I want to talk about the mood of this film. It is really strange because you don't know if you should have like this feeling of awe and respect and reverence or if you should be a little like creeped out being in this convent. This film reminded me of The House That Screamed in more than more than one way, actually. It, it bore a lot of similarities to The House That Screamed. Even though that wasn't a convent, it still had this very um, serious, all girls school, you're trapped kind of situation. However, the two differed a lot because where The House That Screamed spent a lot of time setting the scene, getting you situated, letting you get to know characters and stuff, Immaculate doesn't really get you situated and they just jump right in towards the main plot line that's driving you to the climax. But yes, the mood throughout is very ominous and tense. And it's fun when movies kind of cultivate that tone, even when you're not sure like why you should be feeling that way yet, but you just like know something is wrong. Of course, we are watching a horror movie. Speaking of horror, let's talk about some of the elements that occur in this film. If you have seen the trailer, it should be no surprise to you that uh, a pregnancy is involved. So the pregnancy horror in this film is real. And I, I love me some pregnancy horror. But as for religious horror, that's not really what this was. It was kind of lacking in religious horror, especially like compared to the amount of pregnancy horror we've got here. And this was not nearly as supernatural as I was hoping it would be. So I was thinking it might be religious, supernatural, pregnancy horror, but there's really not a lot of supernatural activity going on. Now, while this horror film is really trying to be fresh and original and surprising, there are some just very cliche, tropey things thrown in here that kind of made me roll my eyes. <laughs> this is like jump scare, shot value kind of stuff. It almost like brings the movie down to like this juvenile status, even if for a moment. I'm like, what is this baby's first horror movie? That's all I'm gonna say about the elements here because I don't wanna get too spoilery for you. So let's move on. The pace, the pace of this film, like I wasn't bored or anything like that, I feel like the film was too rushed. I was digging like the all, all girl school vibe at the beginning and just like, oh, I was really looking forward to just getting to know everybody and like learning what daily life is like here. But we kind of just jump over all of that and go right to the, the main story. I can't imagine how much content or how much of the like original idea had to be cut out of this for the sake of having a normal runtime. There could have been so much more here, but and the film could have easily been like two and a half hours long. So I appreciate that they decided to make a sacrifice to make it a normal runtime. However, there was just like 
it felt rushed, um, and there was a lot of stuff that didn't get expanded upon. So that brings me to the story. There's a lot of stuff that happens that doesn't get explained. There's a lot of little like threads that never get followed. Certain things are in this film where I'm like, why, why is that even there? Like, for example, this convent is a hospice, like a hospice convent. What was even the point of that? What was even the point of it being a hospice? For those of you who've seen it, like, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just so you can, like, see some, some scary old ladies briefly. The fact that there is so much that's happening that, that doesn't get explained, it does add this sort of dreamlike, nonsensical, almost a uh, hallucinogenic nature to the story, which could be intentional. I even read a review on Letterboxd that uh, referenced Jean Roland and saying, like, they could see similarities and like parallels with his work so like sure it, it could be intentional i'm sure we've all seen our share of non-exploitation or general exploitation movies that make no sense <laughs> or the story just does nothing so i'll let it slide i guess because this film is original i'll give it that it is original and it did surprise me a few times so i appreciated it and before i get to my overall thoughts i did want to talk a little bit about elevated horror and like my understanding of elevated horror and this is like a huge conversation that gets pretty freaking scholarly okay so perhaps i've been misusing the term elevated horror or perhaps you have or perhaps we all have i don't know so when i'm saying elevated horror like this is what i'm thinking it is horror with a message it is horror with an agenda with like an angle oftentimes it's like a social cultural political commentary of some sort with like a metaphor it's horror that's just deeper than surface level and it's horror that tries to surprise you shock you outwit you yeah basically it's like horror with a meaning and what i have found with a lot of this kind of horror is that it's just not very rewatchable and it's not really there to thrill you or scare you or uh, show you a fun time it's there to make you uncomfortable and potentially upset. And that's where I'm sort of diverging from like this, what mainstream horror is becoming. Like I'm not, I don't want to be watching a horror movie to be upset. <laughs> I want to watch a horror movie to have a blast. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so to me, once I started realizing like what the real message is in this movie, I was like, oh, this is some elevated shit. Which is, I mean, it's fine, you know, like that doesn't, that doesn't rule it out in my book. But let's get to my overall thoughts here. One thing I can say about elevated horror is it definitely opens up conversation. Like when my husband and I see a new horror movie, we, we talk about it for like hours because there's just so much to say. Because there's so much to like interpret and discuss. I feel like I could write a 20 page paper on this movie. But why would I do that? This is not why I'm watching a horror movie. Anyway, so Immaculate was pretty, pretty special, pretty fun for a fan of Italian cinema, a fan of Giallo or exploitation. I mean, it was fun to watch. It was a fun experience. I like, fun. It was an interesting experience. But I'm not really sure how I feel about the film overall. I kind of feel the same way about it as I feel about something like Midsummer, where I'm just like, that was like iconic or whatever, but have I ever reached for it again? No. I'm gonna go through all that again. It's really not the kind of movie you can put on uh, to, to wash dishes or to just have like a chill Friday night. It's not like that. Even though it was very original and entertaining, it still for me falls in that like mid range. For now anyway. And that wraps up the spoiler free section. So if you wanna come with me, we're gonna go into spoiler territory. Um, otherwise, you should leave now. Exit's right over there. And uh, check out the movie if you want. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's continue. Now let's get into the secrets, the spoilers. I think the overall idea of a virgin nun becoming pregnant is awesome. You could go so many ways with it. Did, did a priest do it? 
Did Satan do it? Did Jesus do it? Was she uh, participating in some extracurricular activities? There's so many possibilities, but instead, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't really like that there was like a sci-fi, almost sci-fi explanation behind this, that the priests are like these genetic experimental doctors trying to Jurassic Park make themselves Jesus. I don't know. I would have rather had some kind of supernatural element than a sci-fi element, but okay. So in case uh, you didn't catch on, this film is about women's reproductive rights. It's a powerful message and I think the film does an effective job at making the audience feel how, that, how Cecilia feels. To feel how it feels to be forced to have a baby you don't want. Or, you know, even just feel how it feels for other people to like make your body their business. This is a terrifying concept. Yet also, it's just daily freaking reality. There's a lot of scenes and moments that really like hit home when it comes to this theme um, of a woman's bodily autonomy being taken away from her. Like where Cecilia's running across that field and these two men just close in on her and grab her. Or when she's in the exam room and there's just a ton of people hovering over her, staring at her because they like are really invested in this baby. However, I grow a bit tired of women's everyday real life problems being portrayed as like ooky spooky horror entertainment. Like on one hand it's cathartic, sure. But on the other hand, like I didn't come here to look through a horror lens at my place in the world. You know, like, oh thanks. For me, I kind of want horror to be like fantasy and fun. And with a film like this that has this message, it adds this layer of drama, which for me, adding that drama takes away a little bit of the horror and makes it into something a little more complex than just a straight up horror movie. I get so annoyed when horror movies also try to make their audience cry. That is so annoying. Like, why are we here? Are we here to be scared and scream and go eek? Or are we here to cry? Maybe I'm superficial, maybe I'm shallow, maybe I just like trash and can't appreciate something of substance. Still, the movie was brutal, like it was it was cool, there's so much blood and so much meaningful imagery here. And as we were going through the movie and I'm sitting next to my husband, I was thinking like, is this for the girls? Like, I kind of feel like this is a movie for the girls. This is a super girly movie. But at the same time, I'm like, is it though? Cause we already know all this. <laughs> like we live this. The, the film was very dreary and it really make you upset, I guess. Not like, just like irritated, like you're angry for what's going on here. But the ending, of course, is so metal. The ending was awesome. We are given a pregnant virgin nun in labor, murdering people, squeezing out that baby, and then smashing it dead with a rock. Did Cannibal Corpse write this? Look, I'm not sure what the point of this message is because I feel like anyone who's pro-life and watching this is not gonna be converted to pro-choice. But I loved the killing spree. It was really, really cool. However, coming face to face, literally, with labor was highly unpleasant. Again, I, I wanted to reiterate that I was kind of disappointed that there's not anything supernatural in this film at all, actually. Like, there's no sign of God, but there's no sign of Satan either. So that is pretty interesting for a religious setting. Oh yeah, I also wanted to mention that this is like technically a rape revenge movie, isn't it? So in some ways, this did kind of feel like a run of the mill conspiracy story. Cause that, that's really how I would describe this movie besides being a pregnancy horror is this is a conspiracy movie. It was run of the mill in a lot of ways, but I think adding the, the like, commentary on the hot button issue of women's reproductive rights kind of like gives it a, a spark, you know? It's funny, I was like, I was talking to Zach afterwards and I was like, how come all these horror movies have to be so moralistic now? <laughs> like, <laughs> and then I realized I'm saying that about a nun who killed people and gave birth and killed her baby and I'm calling that a moralistic movie. <laughs> anyway, so I think 
the the message was effective the film was beautiful like a, good job everybody but this isn't necessarily what I want out of a film and this isn't necessarily one that I'd come back to I don't know though like I saw it yesterday so I'm still having to process a lot and I do have to like watch or read some other people's reviews more in depth just to kind of get a better feel for what I've just been through but it was fun it was fun watching this trailer and being like I have to see it and then like making a beeline to the theater and watching it it was fun I haven't even been to the theater since Megan so it was nice it was a fun experience and I would love to hear y'all's thoughts on the movie if you have seen it and I have talked for a long time so ciao